boy a diocese and weekly catechesis today at regional parties cathedral summa supper the property teacher of boya touched on the theme bishops in particular churches enumerating the various responsibilities of bishops meanwhile yesterday sunday april 14 2024 the prelate paid a pastoral visit to christ the king parish in eden now where he appreciated and encouraged the christian people for their enormous efforts in erecting a house of worship over the weekend indigents of the great support community convened to launch their association the great support cultural and development association is known with the acronym Greskuda. and in sports we bring to you matches overplayed played over the weekend towards the final qualifiers of southwest regional representatives for the cameroon cup competition Good evening to you dear viewers and welcome to Divine Mercy Prime. Those were the headlines for tonight's newscast. Their full readouts will be yours in a moment. The Bishop of the Diocese of Boya, His Lordship Michael Bibi, conducted his weekly catechetical program known as Know Your, F know Your Feet. Today's focus was on bishops in particular churches. The Catholic, faith te the Catholic faith teacher highlighted the fact that the bishop's distinct responsibility towards catechumens, priests, and various apostolates was key. It was emphasized that each bishop in charge of a particular church should promote unity and dialogue with those of different denominations or religious movements. This teaching session took place today at Regina Parches Cathedral, Sumo Support Boya. In the following report, Father Martin J provides with us or provides to us more details on what happened. For some, the Bishop of Boya, His Lordship Michael Bibi, is renowned as the development bishop. For others, he is the bishop of national integration. For others, he is the exceptional teacher of the Catholic faith. With a focus on the faith, in today's teaching, the bishop centralized his catechesis on the caption, bishops in particular churches as found in the Code of Canon Law, paragraph 368, following. In addition to the point that bishops should have special concern for catechumen and priest, striking and enlivening, as it could appear, is the teaching that each bishop is not only concerned with the Catholic faithful of his diocese, but with others in various denominations and congregations with the spirit of ecumenism and interreligious dialogue fostered. He noted other responsibilities of the bishops while reminding the faithful to adhere unto the truth of the faith. As the bishops are concerned, mention is made in other areas of the world, if you go there, you see that there are different rites, like the Coptic rites and all the rest. If you are a bishop in a particular church that you have other rites apart from the Latin rite, you have a duty and a responsibility to see to it that you encourage those who are in the different rites to have a priest of their own rites in order to help them as far as their own spiritual life is concerned at the same time the bishop is not concerned only with the catholic christians in his diocese there are some christians who are not catholic it is still the responsibility of the bishop to see to it that he reaches out to them and we are saying this from the point of view of ecumenism to make sure that the other mainstream churches like the presbyterian church like the baptist church you know the spirit of ecumenism should be fostered in all these the prelates themselves are called to a holy life and be mothers of holiness and good example to others for emulation the bishop then went further to explain what is meant by an apostolate, citing Canon 863 following. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, in paragraph 863, teaches us that an apostolate 
is every activity of the mystical body of Christ that is aimed at spreading the good news. And it continues in paragraph 864 to say that Jesus Christ is the source of apostolate in the church. Which means that every apostolate has to be Christocentric. And that is why as far as apostolates in the diocese is concerned, it is the responsibility of the bishop. Participation was massive and faithful, filed in their recommendations, remarks, and general feedback after the session. I was really impressed for the bishop because it made us to understand who the bishop is and all that he does. It was so wonderful that we know who the bishop is and he tells us everything, what he does, his function, and so I'm really aware the priest and the relation he has with the Christians. So if I'm very happy and I want to wish him that he continue in this way as he has started, so that we, the Christians, to our own spiritual life will be built up. He has enlightened Christians on the team of uh, bishops, in particular churches, on how we should regard the bishops' functions in relations with other churches, which get across not only Roman Catholic Church, Muslim communities, Presbyterian Church, or mushroom churches. So he has enlightened us on how his function does not only concentrate within the Catholic Church, but under his diocese or area of jurisdiction, he has a right to reach out to some of the faithful Christians or people. The diocese and the world at large look forward to another session with the prelate Michael Beebe in the program Know Your Feet. His Lordship Michael Beebe, after returning from the Bishop's General Assembly in Yaoundé, paid a pastoral visit to Christ the King Parish, Idinao, one of the parishes located at the west coast of Cameroon. During the Eucharistic celebration held in honor of this visit, the prelate praised the Christian community for the progress made in the construction of the new building's church. He expressed his anticipation of the mass celebration to be conducted by bishops of Cameroon during their annual seminar in January 2025, which will be hosted here in Boya. Hillary Clinton accompanied the bishop to Idi now and now reports. Bishop Michael Bibi was on this pastoral visit to Christ the King Parish, Idina, one of the parishes located in the west coast of Cameroon, to evaluate the pastoral life of the parish community. The Sunday April 14 visit of the prelate saw him presiding at the Eucharistic celebration with the parishioners, being the first time the bishop is celebrating the Eucharist in this new parish structure, which is currently under construction. He uses the opportunity to commend the Christians of Idina I remember I said last time we have been come for here, I've been told when I say if we don't put floor for this church, I no go come for here. And say well, when I put the floor, I go come and I go celebrate mass. And when I've been hearing you say the floor, it don't be set already, I talk say make I come. I take my eye to a chop Christmas. So congratulations for Una. I know say no been an easy thing for Duam. Bishop Bibi emphasized on the importance of unity among the parishioners. He urged them to remain united and supported to one another as they strive towards completing their new church building. The prelate further challenged the Christians of Christ the King Parish Edenar regarding the completion of their church structure. He envisioned the possibility of the bishops of Cameroon celebrating Mass in the church edifice come January 2025 within the context of the annual seminar to be hosted by the Diocese of Boya. I fix this church as see I'm day correct. Inside that program with Bishop Ode, I'll take one day with Bishop Ojo come off of their meeting, then drive come for ED now. Can't talk Mass inside this church. Cognizant of the bishop's vision, the parish priest, Reverend Father Emeli Komi, together with his parish chairperson, Shea Cosmos Fengla, 
outlined that they are grateful for the challenge and with the collaboration of the Christians, the bishop's vision will become a reality. This is the second time he's visiting us after I came to this parish and this is the second challenge he's giving. Noting that the first challenge was they will not visit us until we have a floor in our church. We have struggled to put our hands together to ensure that we have a floor in our church. And now we are faced with another challenge again. Uh, the promise of welcoming the bishops of Cameroon for their annual seminar when they come in January. We are very, very grateful for that challenge as well. And together with the Christians, we shall put our hands on deck to ensure that we meet up to that challenge. I think me and the Christians of this community as usual, we will put our heads together and we will try to see what to do to accomplish that task because we cannot let it go. The Christians of Christ the King Parish Edna now have a maximum of eight months to complete their church structure and stand a chance of hosting the bishops of Cameroon within the context of the annual general seminar come January 2025. The bishops of Cameroon met last week for their fortnight plenary conference in Vole, Iyawundi. For one week, the 26 bishops and their emeriti dwelt on the various issues affecting the church in Cameroon and its people. The conference ended last Saturday, April 13th, with a final communique. Joyce Mbong was present in Iyawundi at the conference and once more tells us or drives us through the various resolutions that were taken. The 49th Plenary Assembly of the Bishops of Cameroon officially closed on Saturday, April 13, 2024. After listening and examining reports of the 14 commissions, the Bishops of Cameroon made some remarks and appointments in their final communique. At the conference hall in Volier, His Grace Andonkeya, Archbishop of Bamenda and President of the National Episcopal Conference of Cameroon in his closing remark, also called on all Cameroonians to take up their civic responsibility by registering and casting their vote for the upcoming presidential elections while calling on the government to make sure the elections are free, fair and transparent. The, the most important aspect of every election is that it is a civil duty to every individual, every citizen of the country. You cannot sit in your house and be crying about change in your room. Go out and register and this is the only way you can influence the destiny of your country by exercising your civil right. And that is why in the Commission of Justice and Peace and in the conference, we are appealing that everybody should exercise this right and that the government should ensure that people recognize themselves in the vote that they have casted. His Grace Andun Kia also condemns the rate at which human life is being taken indiscriminately in the country. He reiterated on the sacrality of life and no one has the right to take away another's life. In Cameroon, the human life is treated more and more without respect. Uh, they have made human life to be very common. And so the bishops have insisted on the teaching of the church that human life is sacred. Nobody has the right to take away the life of another. We have to live like brothers and sisters and respect one another. And we insist that nobody can take the life of another Thou shalt not kill. At the end of their deliberations, the bishops made some major appointments at the National Episcopal Conference. At the end of the meeting, the bishops made the following appointments. General Secretariat, Secretary General, Monsignor Paul Nyaga, Archdiocese of Douala. Deputy Secretary General, Reverend Father James Ndifon, Diocese of Kumbo. General Bursa, Abe Lazar Owono, Diocese of Obala. National Secretariat for Catholic Education. National Secretary, Abe Aurelien Lehon Mbeya, Diocese of Ngaoundere. Deputy National Secretary, Reverend Father Kajetan Ejole Edimejan, Diocese of Kumba. Episcopal Com Commission for the Doctrine of the Faith, Subcommission for the Biblical Apostolate, Coordinator, 
Abbé Eli Kenye, Diocese of Baturi, Episcopal Commission for the Lay Apostolate, General Chaplain, Abbé Florent Z. Ntongo, Diocese of Mbalmayo, Caritas Commission Cameroon, Coordinator, Abbé Arnaud Girardin Batlemy Nkua Owono, Diocese of Obala. Episcopal Commission for Communication, Coordinator, Abbe Philippe Chimchua, Archdiocese of Garoa. Episcopal Commission for Justice and Peace, National Prisons Chaplain, Abbe Guy Marcelin Avozwa Etundi, Archdiocese of Yaoundé. Episcopal Commission for Evangelization, Subcommission for Migrants and Refugees. Secretary, Abegi Marcelin Avozwa Etundi, Archdiocese of Yaoundé. Done on this day in Yaoundé, the 13th of April 2024. Signed, Monsignor Jervis Kebe, Secretary General. The rendezvous is taken for next year, April 2025, for the 50th Plenary Assembly of the Bishops of Cameroon. Since Andrew Parish Muya has staged the first edition of the Muya Parish Choir Easter concert, attracting several or a crowd of enthusiastic music lovers, guests at the concert were treated to the melodious songs presented by the choir. The event held Sunday, April 14, 2024 at the Parish House. The concert centered on the theme, Jesus is risen as he said, Matthew chapter 28, verse 5 to verse 6. Nadeshme was there and now gives us details. The Easter concert of St. Andrew Parish Monia, held on April 14th, 2024, was a resounding success as it attracted a large crowd of enthusiastic Christians eager to be surrounded by the melodious songs like Seigneur de la Danse, Great Dagon, amongst others. The highlight of the evening was undoubtedly the choir's rendition of classic Easter hymns and spiritual songs. The harmonious voices of the choristers filled the air. From traditional hymns to contemporary gospel tunes, the choristers showcase vocal and musical talents, leaving a lasting impression on all those present. Parish priest Reverend Father Kingsley Chinonso expressed his admiration for the choir's exceptional performance. He commends the choristers for their dedication, hard work, commitment in spreading joy and spiritual enlightenment through music together with the parish chair lady. They outlined different advices for the choir. Just one simple advice to them the world out there is appreciating them that they have given the best to make liturgy what it is supposed to be. The Bishop of the Diocese of Boya is so particular in making sure that liturgy is all adulterated. And I am following his footstep to make sure that liturgy is one of the best. Because without liturgy, the Catholic Church has nothing to write home about. Alright? So if our liturgy is the best, then our choir must be able to lead the liturgy, making sure that liturgy is the best. The choir, the advice that I will give is that they must be able to come together. What we have seen today shows that unity is strength. Unity gives the best. So we encourage them that when they have something that they can come together as a parish choir, they should be able to go for it. 
the success of the Monia Parish Choir Easter concert was not only evident in the quality of music presented, but also in the overwhelming support shown by local community, families, friends and parishioners who came together to celebrate this musical demonstration. <laughs> Singing once is praying twice as the Adish hosts it. Hence, the attendees departed to their various destinations with a level of spiritual upliftment. Let's take you to the Vatican where Pope Francis over the weekend visited the young children of St. John Mary Vianney Parish at the suburbs of Rome. He delivered his catechesis to them on their relationship with one another and on the need to be grateful to God irrespective of the circumstances they do go through. This catechesis serves as one of the key activities earmarked for the celebration of the year of prayer. Details and more in this report. Youth of today, leaders of tomorrow. This common adage heard by several persons still remains relevant to society today and more so for the church as she is forever young and for the young. Pope Francis conscious of the role and impact of the young in the church always creates time to be with them as part of his apostolate. This was the case over the weekend when he journeyed to the suburbs of Rome to catechize the young of St. John Mary Vianney Parish. He opens the session with a childlike joke. Primero de to, stia atento. Stia atento, Signor Papa. Stia atento. Perché i bambini fanno chiasso. È vero questo che i bambini fanno chiasso? Sono tutti con le mani così e pregano? Soltanto quello? Stai attento. Le bugie non si dicono. Teaching the young presence on the need for having good relationships with others, as well as giving thanks to God in all circumstances, be they good or bad moments, the Supreme Pontiff encouraged them to have lips that say thank you always. Being touched by the teaching, one of the children asked how possible one could thank God when in pains. To this, the prelate responded. Come posso ringraziare e pregare il Signore anche se sto passando un periodo della mia vita così e così? Nei momenti di difficoltà, nei momenti della malattia, dobbiamo anche ringraziare il Signore o no? Sì, sì, ringraziare il Signore perché ci dà la pazienza di tollerare la difficoltà. E questa è una cosa bella, perché se noi non abbiamo la pazienza, non possiamo davare avanti la... Another participant at the doctrinal session inquired from His Holiness Pope Francis how he himself practically thanked God after his election as Pope. With his usual sense of humor, the Supreme Pontiff answered... Chi deve ringraziare il Signore? Io o voi? <ride> Ma noi abbiamo, dobbiamo imparare questo. Lei mi domandava se io ho ringraziato il Signore o come ho ringraziato il Signore. Sempre nella vita ci guida il Signore. Avete capito questo? Sempre il Signore nella vita ci porta avanti, ci porta su questa strada, ci porta con l'altra. Noi dobbiamo essere obbedienti. Meeting their needs as children in need of God, the Pope blessed them and departed ways well fed, re energized, and fulfilled, having listened to their father in the faith. Sons and daughters of Great Support Village have united to support the cultural and developmental projects in their community. The Great Support Cultural and Developmental or and Development Association, known by the acronym GRESCUDA, was officially launched over the weekend here in Boya. Aloysius Lique provides us a detailed rep report on the two-day activities that took place over the weekend. 
Together we make support great is the motto that will guide sons and daughters of Great Support Boya after the launch of the Great Support Village Cultural and Development Association Jib Greskuda. The two days event that opened on the 12th of April 2024 brought together indigenous friends and well wishes to the only place that is named Great after Great Britain in the world to celebrate love, togetherness, culture and progress. The two days event was attended by traditional and state officials as well as benefactors who all came together to bless Grace Kuda and participate in his median and great project, the construction of the community multipurpose center that will host offices, a hall and other business ventures. Today we are officially presenting to the administration and the general public this important association with the major item on our agenda being a fundraiser for the construction of our village community hall. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished personalities, the greatness of Great Support Village constitute the reason that why we are all gathered here today. Motivated by the need to make support great. The sons and daughters of great support met some few years back and decided to constitute themselves under an umbrella association known as Great Support Cultural and Development Association, Grace Kuda, at the service of the chief and community. In this occasion, the Senior Divisional Officer for FACO appreciated the sons and daughters for partnering with the government to bring development in the communities while encouraging the spirit of living together. The government cannot do all alone. We have to contribute to accelerate the development in our communities. We have to give our contribution. This is the reason why we are here to tell you that I'm here to represent the government. I'm here to represent the decision to say that the decision is giving the go ahead for this project because we are we think and we agree that that project can bring development in this village. It is not only the project of the native of Big Support. It is for all of us because the head of state is promoting the living together for all those people who have the living, who are living here in this village, in this area. I want to also call them to contribute actively to this project as I'm giving the example. The coming together was spiced with cultural activities and concert from renowned artists such as Adolf Mundi aka PTPE and Mola Mogombe as well as a sport walk. In a bid to construct the multipurpose hall, the association carried out the Operation One Back Cement which saw indigenous friends and world wishes contributing massively towards this great project that will add to the greatness of support. We now talk sports. Looking forward to the final day of qualifiers for the representatives of the Southwest region to partake in the Cameroon Cup competition, some teams clashed during the weekend in both the Meme and Fako pools. Five teams have dropped among the ten teams that played the second phase of the competition. John Philip Wanla was at the Moliko Omnisport Stadium this weekend and now reports. As qualification games of the representative of the Southwest region to the Cameroon Cup is rounding up, Thursday 11th of April 2024 saw some games in the Meme Pool, while Saturday the 13th of April 2024 were the games for the Fako Pool, playing the second phase of the knockout competition. In one of the games at the Moliko Omnisport Stadium during the weekend, fans and football stakeholders stayed glued to their seats as losing a game means out of the competition. Senior Def F.A. here in White Jersey clashed with best stars in blue. Best stars starting during the first half were seemingly the best side as they put pressure on their opponents, Senior Def. Due to some form of laxity, best stars erroneously failed to stop Rudolf Ndive, shirt number 10, from finding a net as they kept the game one goal to zero all through the first half. It was a tough game physically as the referee couldn't hesitate to take out his card in case of any fouls. Not long, Sinodev nailed it again as the fans knew that was the end being two goals ahead. 
Not until a foul at the 18 meter box took place and Best Stars obtained the penalty, which they came back one goal up. And a few minutes to the end of the game, they equalized two goals each to the disappointment of the senior day fans and the technical bench. Directly, they went for penalty shots. It was a draw all through till Best Stars failed to convert their spot kick into a goal, giving senior Dev the opportunity to lead. Both sides played 10 sports kicks. Senior Dev came victorious 10 goals and Best Stars 9 goals. I played against a very good team, a Best Star team. Very good team, you know, it's an academy, I respect them so much. But you know we had an objective to win. You know, Senior Dev, uh, Cameroon Cup is our first objective. So we put all our missionaries to win matches and see how we can present the region in Cameroon Cup. Another classic derby followed immediately as Fako United clashed against Tico United alias the Samba Boys. Both clubs rallied their fans behind them, pushing, encouraging, singing as a mark of imparting their presence. Fako boys in red kept pressing their opponents, the Samba boys, in lemon green shirt as they were from all expectations the best side. The open scores early in the first half, leading the Samba boys one goal to zero. All attempts by the Samba boys didn't yield fruit as the goalie wouldn't give them the chance. Not until toward the end of the second half that the Samba boys found a breakthrough from a free kick, bringing hope to the fans of Samba and appreciated by the fans of Fako. Fans couldn't hide their feelings as they kept encouraging their boys. Another penalty shootout as the game ended in a one off time. It was at the second penalty shot that Jesse number four of the Samba boys hit the ball straight to the right hand flank of the bar, missing his penalty. So too Jesse number six for the Samba boys failed to score his spot kick as the goalie for Fako stopped the ball. This raised brows as fans of Samba attempted to abruptly terminate the game as they wouldn't agree the defeat. Thanks to the intervention of the forces of law, order was restored and a chance to complete the game in favor of the Fako boys. Talking with the coach, he expressed his satisfaction and preparedness for the next game. As you can see by the day, my team keeps, keeps on growing. The strength, the way they are playing, it keep on ameliorating. We are still going back to our drawing board so that we'll be able to see how the team will be able to play more better than this. Al Jazeera lost to Talented two goals to one. Kumba City played a zero all tie with Bright Stars FC, winning them in penalty four goals to three. So too, Legend FA in a one all tie with Future Dream FA beat them in penalties five goals to four. The Southwest region is waiting for the final day of play to know who represents them at the Cameroon Cup competition. Out of the country, the United Kingdom and the United States of America have condemned Iran's attack on Israel during an emergency meeting of the UN's Security Council on Sunday. In Sudan, in Sudan, the current war there with a lack of aid is pushing the country to the urge of a famine and at least 60 persons have died as a result of floods that have hit several parts of Tanzania. Joseph Otto has details of these foreign stories. Both the UK and US have condemned Iran's attack on Israel during an emergency meeting of the UN Security Council on Sunday. It comes as the US assisted Israel in shooting down dozens of drones and missiles fired by Iran in what was the first time it had launched a direct military assault on Israel. Israeli authorities said 99% of the inbound weapons were shot down without causing any significant damage. The United States condemns in the strongest terms the unprecedented attack on the state of Israel by the Islamic Republic of Iran and its militant proxies and partners. Robert Wood, U.S. Deputy Ambassador to the U.N., told the Security Council in response to the attack. He urged members to unequivocally condemn Iran's aggressive actions and call on Tehran and its partners and proxies to stop their attacks in the region. One year into the war in Sudan, the parochial conditions and lack of aid is pushing the country to the edge of famine, according to humanitarian agencies. The war in Sudan that began a year ago between the country's military chaired by General Abdel Fattah Bohan and the notorious Rapid Support Forces commanded by General Mohamed Hamdan will mark one year this Monday. The war in the African country has killed thousands and forced 8 million people 
to flee their homes to safer areas inside Sudan or to neighboring countries, according to the United Nations figures. The Integrated Food Security Phase Classification said that security conditions and lack of access meant the agency was unable to update its assessment from December when it found 17.7 million people in Sudan were facing acute food insecurity, of them about 5 million being one step from famine. Nearly 60 people have died since the start of April in heavy Nearly 60 people have died since the start of April in heavy rains and flooding that has hit several parts of Tanzania, the government said. The coastal region of the East African country is one of the worst affected, with floods damaging thousands of farms there. Mubare Matingi, the government spokesperson, said in a statement this Sunday. Last Friday, eight school children died after their bus plunged into a flooded gorge in the north of the country. The deluge has also led to the death of at least 13 people and displaced some 15,000 in neighboring Kenya, the UN said. The El Nino weather phenomenon has worsened this year's seasonal rains, weather experts said. That report wraps up Divine Mercy Prime tonight. But before we part ways, let's take you through the headlines once more. Boya Diocese and Weekly Catechesis today at Regina Parish's Cathedral Summer Supper. The proper teacher of Boya touched on the theme Bishops in Particular Churches, enumerating the various responsibilities of bishops. Meanwhile, yesterday, Sunday, April 14, 2024, the prelate paid a pastoral visit to Christ the King Parish in Idinao, where he appreciated and encouraged the Christian people for their enormous efforts in erecting a house of worship. Over the weekend, indigenous of the Great, of the great Support Community convened to launch their association. The Great Support Cultural and Development Association is known with the acronym Grace Kuda. And in sports, we brought to you matches over plate played over the weekend towards the final qualifiers of Southwest Regional Representatives for the Cameroon Cup competition. Thanks for watching the Vimeo Prime. Stay tuned for more interesting and educative programs at DMR TV. Up next shall be Mountain Echoes. Have a restful night. Good night. <laughs>